I wanted to start off talking about just kind of the start broad with you have a very wide range of music. You've you know, you've played funk, uh, blues, bluegrass, jazz, and you've even worked in classical as a recording engineer. Um, mm -hmm. I guess I'm kind of curious what draws you to these different areas of music and as a performer, how do you incorporate these different styles into your playing? Um, in terms of like being drawn, I think there are a couple things. One, I think it's just like, I'm drawn to just music in general, like it affects me, you sure. know, um, um, you know, the emotions that, that all different types of music can create. Mm. And that that's not necessarily like limited to to any particular genre, um, but also just like I think my life has uh, has been a bit of a wild ride. You know, I grew up in Bozeman, Montana, yeah, um, and then um, went to school at the Oberlin Conservatory. Um, and I majored in jazz, but, you know, I was participating in the orchestra the whole time. And, um, you know, I started, uh, as a classical player, oh, sure. um, but also like before I played bass, I played a little bit of like bluegrass fiddle, mm. you know, um, it's kind of the first instrument I played. And then, um, and and when I moved to Chicago, you know, I just started going to clubs. I went to like Blues on Halstead, the Kingston Mines, Roses, all those like the blues bars were kind of some of the first places I would go to. And then I worked as an intern at WFMT, which led to work as the um, as first an assistant to Christopher Willis, who was the recording engineer for the Chicago Symphony at the time. Oh wow! And then. Um, and then when he um, left that job, I took it over for a year and a half. I was the recording engineer for the Chicago Symphony for a year and a half. Uh, yeah. um, I just, I, I tried to stay involved in music in any way I could and, um, and, and playing bass wasn't always the primary way in which I did that. But um, it has become that now sure. um, because I love it. So, um, and I think also partially, you know, the thing about like, if I, like you said, I played, um, I had a bluegrass band for a while. Yeah. Um, it wasn't, you know, I don't play that kind of music anymore, not because I just liked the music but because I didn't always connect to the audience, to be honest. Oh, okay. There was like, there was a disconnect I felt between, um, like I, I had a hard time relating to the people who would want to talk to me after shows. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, it was like, they, they don't, like I just didn't connect to the culture around the music, actually. But the music itself um, is still, you know, uh, something I consider to be really beautiful. Sure. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just kind of. <laughs> no, yeah, uh, I think that's really. Go with the flow of life. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think that's really interesting what you're saying. Your your life has gone in so many different trajectories, and music has always been a part of that, and it's followed those different project trajectories. As I feel like with bluegrass, as you're learning about yourself, what you can interact with, what you like. Mm -hmm. It's really yeah. awesome. Um, you mentioned you mentioned there that you've you, your life has kind of been all over the place. Um, you've lived, you've played in a bunch of different places, um, but something's brought you back to Chicago. What mm -hmm. I'm kind of interested in what initially drew you to Chicago, and what led you to return to Chicago after moving to New York, which also, of course, has a very prominent jazz scene. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see, I originally moved to Chicago because, um, when I graduated from college, I was dating someone who was, a, who was kind of from here. 
yeah. and he wanted to come back, you know, to be around his family. And I was kind of like, sure, why not? You know? Yeah. Um, it was just kind of um, a way to, to, you know, it's like when you graduate college, it's like, you know, you're not sure what you're going to do. I didn't have a job lined up necessarily anywhere. Um, so it was just a new place to explore. Um, and have a sense of kind of a support network around me. So I moved in with him. Um, And it was actually kind of when that relationship fell apart that I started really kind of going to jam sessions more Hmm. because um, a lot of my friends up to that point were his friends, you know? And so going to to sessions and kind of relearning how to play the bass, because I had stopped playing bass when I was kind of, you know, um, I, I worked. I worked for someone, someone running for judge in Cook County. I worked at a cobbler shop, and then I was doing the recording engineer stuff. Um, and I, I wasn't really playing bass a whole lot when I first moved to Chicago. I was kind of burnt out on it, and I did a bunch of other things. Yeah. Um, so when that relationship fell apart, I was drawn back to the bass almost as a form of therapy. You know, playing music, and then, mm. and then I started going to jam sessions and started like like developing my own friends, my own community, you know, Yeah. Um, and got an apartment that, you know, I lived in by myself for the first time. Um, so, um, and let's see, so then I think that, you know, I found people, you know, who, who, kind of saw me coming to these sessions and falling flat on my face over and mm. over again. And, <laughs> and they were kind of like, hey, you should, you know, come over to my house and we should shed, you know. It's like they got tired of seeing me uh, struggle. And so I had people who just kind of, you know, turned up and were either also new to town, you know, and trying to meet people. Um, and, and those become kind of your, your, your friends and your crew and you don't really – you know, it's, it's like those kind of friendships. I think when you're making them, you don't realize that, that those are the friendships that are going to last your whole life. Yeah. Um, cause they're they're going to be really important, you know? And then, and then the people who decided to help me out, it's just like that. I immediately, I was so grateful, mm. you know, it's like, I felt like I had my own life with my, you know, um, and people who were showing me a lot of generosity with their time and information. And from that is really, I think, also something that's somewhat unique to Chicago. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a tradition in Chicago of, of mentorship oh, sure. that, that I didn't find in New York or Los Angeles. Granted, I wasn't in either of those places as long. Mm. Um, um, but... Um, but I do think that there there is part of the the art, artist communities in Chicago um, a lot largely because of the history the history of Chicago um, that that is unique and is really really um, it's a it's a great place to learn how learn a craft you know learn an artistic craft because they're like everyone just kind of when they recognize that you're passionate and really people help each other out here. It's great. Yeah. Um, and that's really what kind of keeps drawing me back. It felt like, it felt, feels like a place where people don't let you stay. Mm. You know, it feels like a place where I have family, not just co Yeah. And that's what keeps, what kept bringing me back after New York and after that. So it made me want to come back. That's really awesome. I really, I really appreciate your message. I mean, first about like music as therapy for yourself. I think that's something myself and I'm sure many other people can definitely relate to. And I also, um, I think that's such an interesting perspective and I totally agree in Chicago. It's a community that wants to uplift all of its members. Um, it wants to see everyone in that community succeed and yeah, I really appreciate you sharing your experience on that. Um, yeah. So, speaking of meeting people and community and all of these amazing things, um, you yourself are a big supporter of Jazz Festival. 
of jazz festivals in general. You are the co-founder of the Livingston Jazz Festival. Of course, you'll be performing in our Hyde Park Jazz Festival, um, as I'm sure many other festivals as well. Um, what do you see as the importance of these events for the community? And um, yeah. That's an interesting question. Um, well, particularly in, in Livingston. So Livingston is a small town in Montana. Yeah. Um, it's like the, it's one town over from my hometown. Oh, cool. And it's, that festival originally began, um, I organized a tour um, in, uh, you can't remember what year you know, probably five or six years ago, something like that, sure. with uh, Victor Goins and Greg Archery. Awesome. And um, we went out there and I worked with a high school band director, you know, to like work with his his little jazz combo. Cool. And, and we, would, we kind of did a workshop with them. And then we had a concert that night um, where they opened for us, you know. Oh, awesome. And the place you know, place was packed because it was like full of all their parents hmm. and then it's a small community. So like, like events like that are rare, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, um, um, so, so it seemed like the whole town was in that little room and it was like, they were so, you know, proud of the students involved and the students were so excited and, that it just like the energy was phenomenal. And, and one thing Garrett, the band director told me, he's like, man, it's like, I feel like as a teacher, he was kind of like, you know, part of, part of your job as a teacher is to, to communicate like why, you know, why this is something his students should be excited about. Right. Yeah. Um, and he felt like that part of his job, he no longer had to do mm. it. It's like after that concert, the students were like super into it and super excited about it. So then he could focus on the how, how to do it, yeah. you know, rather than, rather than focusing on the why, mm. you know, why it's worthwhile. And, it's worth and, um, and, and so it, it, that festival, um, he decided to make it like a yearly event and then get got more, more groups involved, like high school, you know, high school jazz bands from, from around the entire state and got, got a grant from the state um, to fund it. Um, and bring in best artists, and it, 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 you know, mostly to expose that particular festival is more educationally, mm. educational oriented, um, to do clinics with students um, and expose them to story and music and a culture that is completely foreign for someone who grows up in Montana. Yeah. You know, that I um, so that's what's really cool about that particular festival. Sure. Um, Hyde Park, Hyde Park, the Hyde Park Fest is obviously uh, organized a bit differently, um, and it's more, I think it's more about, um, the community as a whole, and not so much to focus on youth, you know, um, but I think, I think the neat thing about Hyde Park is, Wait for this car to go by. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the neat thing about Hyde Park is it's it's like keeping alive, you know, um, especially the history of like Brownsville. There used to be so many clubs. People talk about Forty Second Street in New York, but um, you know how like you could go down Forty Second Street and go like one club on one side of the street and one club on the next side of the street, and there'd just be like music, sure. like a whole bunch of bands at once. You know, um, on any given night, and you could just Chicago used to have that. You know, mm. Chicago used to have, you know, a street with like clubs all the way up and down. You know, and you could go see multiple bands a night, and you know, it's kind of more like, you know, like musicians would have eight-hour-long gigs. You yeah. know, that ended at, you know, six in the morning, and then they would all get pancakes. You know, <laughs> that was like, um, but I think Hyde Park is is an indispensable way of, of trying of keeping the the artistic community um, alive um, hmm. especially on the south side of chicago yeah. um um and and it supports a lot of you know brings in 
you know, um, musicians from, from outside the city, but also supports a lot of local musicians. And it's really, I think, um, important for the city to take pride in the musicians who live here. Um, and I, I think, I think uh, Hyde Park really does that well. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's really interesting what you're saying, like, depending on kind of the location of the jazz festival, it can, it can have just very different functions and ambitions and goals. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's really cool. Um, so speaking of the Hyde Park Jazz Festival, um, you're, you yourself are going to be performing with your Phoenix Ensemble, which, first of all, very cool name, very cool name. And Thank you. Um, second, we're, we're just kind of curious about how that group gets started and also maybe what is the origin of the name? How did the Phoenix Ensemble rise from the ashes, I guess? Um, so, well, I, the name, I've, I've kind of had a little bit of an obsession with just the, the, the story of the Phoenix and the Phoenix as a creature yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for a long time. Um, something about you know, um, you know, I guess being reborn after death, after something dies or mm. after something is destroyed, that something is reborn out of it. And, and even like, especially growing up in Montana and being around, you know, wild fires, fires weren't mm. as common as they are now when I was little, but they still happen. And, and the idea that like, there are some some pine trees, most pine trees actually, pine cones, that don't release seed unless they're open. Like they, the pine cones are actually open after a wildfire. Oh, like they don't open unless there is a wildfire, and then the pine cones open and all the seeds come out. And hmm. so, fire is actually a necessary part of of planting new trees. Wow. Which is kind of wild. Yeah, you know? it is wild. Um, and, and then also I just feel like there, there were times in my life when I was just ready to give up mm. or another aspect of my life felt like it just fell apart and was in shambles. Yeah. And music is what I put my energy into to pick myself back up. Sure. Um, and so <clears throat> so the music to me is like my catalyst for 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 picking, you know, um, for getting back up after you've been knocked down. Hmm. So that's kind of for me what the what the name comes from. Sure. Um, yeah, going back to then, the point of like music therapy that you're talking about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Um, and then, and then as far as like, so this, uh, um, the people who are joining me, uh, Vincent Davis on drums. He's been my mentor for 15 years, oh, wow. um, so I'm really, I feel really lucky to be able to um, play with him, you know, uh, not as a student anymore, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. And then, um, and then uh, Corey Wilkes is joining me, and, and I think we're going to have special guest Isaiah Collier stop in oh, awesome. to play with us as well. Um, and uh, those are just two guys who have always, you know, Corey has always been incredibly supportive, and he just brings such incredibly, you know, warm and uplifting energy wherever he goes. Um, and it's just, you know, creates, um, you know, like a landscape every time he plays. You know, it's mm. like he paints with what he what comes out of his trumpet. Um, and then Isaiah is just, he's just fire, you know, yeah. that thing was just made out of fire. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, so it's, it's, I'm excited. Awesome. I, I'm very excited. I know we're all very excited um, for that performance. Um, yeah. And I, I guess, I mean, my final question is just if there's any upcoming projects you've got going on or any upcoming performances, just anything that people should know about. Sure. Um, I'm part of a new project that's a quartet, and it's called a Species Quartet. Um, and we released a record in, in um, I think it was May, 
he was released in May, and then we're, we have a second record coming out in March. Okay. Um, and the members of the quartet, there's a drummer from Los Angeles named Tina Raymond, a pianist out of Denver named Don Plummet, and then a flute player um, out of New York City named Elsa Milton. And so the four of us um, are doing a, a tour of the Midwest in the middle oh, of October, wow. and we're playing at Constellation on October 14th, which is a Friday night. Awesome. Um, and so I'm really excited to bring uh, those women into town and show kind of what we what we have been working on. Um, yeah, that's, that's something I'm excited about. Fantastic. That is very exciting. All right. Well, it was very nice speaking with you today, Emma. Um, mm, me too. Yeah. I think that's... I think that's about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for your performance at the Hyde Park Jazz Festival. I know everyone is. And um, yeah, can't wait to see what you got next. Thanks for doing this. Of course. Thank you so much.